Alright, so I'm going to move on to the, the other part of multivariate, which is the uh, correlation and regression. So we can do a couple different things. We can do multiple correlation. We can do multiple linear and logistic regression. And then you can also do factor analysis. So I'll go through here and then I'll go back to SPSS. So a regression analysis is, you know, looking at a, at a line uh, to compare, uh, you know, the association between one or more uh, variables. If you all recall somewhere in school, you probably had to learn this equation, y equals a plus bx. So you have your, your dependent variable y, your independent variable x, and then you have a slope, um, which is the, the b, and you have your intercept, that's your a. So now with multivariate regression, you just simply have a more complicated equation, but it's the same thing. So it's y equals, in this case it's b sub o, but it's the same as the a, plus bx1, b1 and x1, plus, and you just keep doing the plus, 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 plus until you're you know, done with the variables there. So uh, I'll show you some examples of both linear and logistic regression. Linear is used when you have uh, continuous variables, and you can do um, simple or multiple linear regression. You're going to get a correlation coefficient. You're going to get a, um, an R squared, which um, measures the variance. Uh, and you're going to get a goodness of fit. You're going to get this y equals a plus bx, and you're going to you know, find out how much of the variability in the dependent you're being able to explain by one or more independent variables. Uh, logistic regression, uh, you're using actually a log function, and so you can use uh, dichotomous variables, or variables with, you know, like male, female, true, false, yes, no, uh, responses, and really do kind of the, the same type of analysis. Uh, factor analysis is really looking at, you know, you're looking for patterns in your analysis. So you may have a hundred variables, you may have uh, a survey, and you have maybe a hundred questions, uh, but you, you know, you've been told you can only have 20, 20 questions on your survey, so you want to kind of, um, you know, figure out the clusters or the, you know, the, the factors, um, the variables that are related, and maybe have a, you know, one question from each of those. So that would be an example of the use. So I'm going to start with the simple, um, the correlation, so analyze, correlate, bivariate, and I have all of my continuous variables here lined up. I want to do a Pearson correlation, and what other options do I have? Um, nothing interesting, so I click OK, and you can see here I have just a table of correlations, and of course it's going to do each, each one twice, um, you know, and the one that's um, based, you know, the the variable to the variable obviously is always going to be a, a perfect correlation, but it, then it's going to show you the correlation coefficients, the, the individual correlation coefficients uh, among all of these different variables. So that's always a good place to start, even if you're doing more sophisticated. Um, this really helps you get started in that process. All right, so now if you want to go into regression, so we're going to go for linear regression. Multi, you can do a linear regression here as an example. And again, we can have um, we have a dependent variable of systolic blood pressure change, and we have multiple independent variables. We have blood pressure class, and follow the protocol. You can click on statistics and select what which ones you want. Click continue. Click OK. And we have, again, we have our descriptives, we have our correlations. Uh, I didn't mention also, we did, um, we're doing a stepwise regression in this case. You, you, uh, with regression, you can actually select your method. I think stepwise is still probably the most common. Again, you may want to look at different methods, but um, stepwise is always, and what it's doing then, is it's adding, so you have different variables entered in here, and that's, you know, this is putting them in just one at a time. What it's going to do is going to create a model so that you only have your statistically significant um, variables, and that's also what a factor analysis will be doing.
So but what you can see here is you have you know in your in your model summary, you know, you've got a an R of uh, 0.54 and R square of 0.29. The adjusted R square is really adjusting for the sample size. That's why you may have slight differences there. And if you do have you know, significant differences in sample size, you may have a difference in your adjusted R square. You're always going to get an ANOVA with your regression equation. And then you're going to get your, your um, betas, your slopes, and your intercepts, basically. Okay, it's going to calculate some other things, residuals, and so forth. And you can even create some charts with this. So again, fairly complicated stuff. So let me use an example that's already kind of preloaded. So we have an example here. And we're looking at the relationship between body mass index and gender. We have an R of 0.474 and R square of 0.225. It's significant. Uh, and now we want to say, okay, what if, you know, kind of fly through some of these others, but we're going to add in age in model. So we've, we've taken it from a univariate, a simple to a multivariate where we've added age. And when we did that, the R went up and the R square went up. Okay. So that's an example of a good use of a linear regression here. Okay. And again, we can get our, you know, our other stuff out of here. One thing you really are looking for, it really is, I believe, a lot of times is this R square. How much of this, how much of this variable can you explain um, in this model? Let's go back to, uh, if we want to do a logistic regression, so analyze regression, and now we want to do, so we want to do a binary logistic regression. So maybe we have um, follow the protocol is a yes, no, and gender. Yeah, the, the, yeah, we can put that in as a covariate even. And will that let me, I still need another variable. So yeah, I'm going to put gender in. There we go. I have my options here. Click and I have my logistic regression, okay? And quickly before I go to the example again, if you have, actually this came up in a, in a session I had recently, if you have, you want to do logistic regression two by two, it's a multinomial, then you can actually go to the multinomial logistic regression. So if you have, you know, factors that have more than two levels, then multinomial logistic would be your option here. So again, in this example, this is an example of a logistic regression. We have diabetes and gender. And again, you're not going to have a correlation coefficient because you don't have, these are not continuous variables. It actually is performing a chi-square. Uh, Sarah's going to go more into chi-square on Saturday. Okay, but you have your, so with linear regression, you have a, a goodness of fit. Here we have a likelihood. Um, ratio we have our and lo with logistic it's actually going to pull um, the base kind of out of the uh, and use that as a reference so what you get going back to when we talked about relative risk uh, you actually get an odds ratio here this expo B this is actually the odds ratio okay so again that's just looking at two variables and with logistic regression you can add in so this is our our table here that came up with the the same thing okay uh, but now we're going to add in the body mass index into the equation again we still have significant findings and uh, look what look what happened to the odds ratio when we added in body mass index in fact it went from if you recall, it was um, uh, 5.4. So look what happens to the odds ratio of gender. It actually went down. So maybe body mass index is a um, is a confounder because uh, it actually changed, um, and it's it's no longer significant. So it is a confounder by definition. 
uh, and body mass index is an effect multiplier. So it took it from 5 to 21, or in this case, you know, 2.7 to 21. So this is an example, actually, in a multivariate logistic regression of seeing a confounder and an effect modifier. Last one, Cam, and then we can go to questions, is what? So to do a factor analysis, you go to dimension reduction. Because remember when I said you have, you had your 100 questions in your survey, but you can only use 20 of them. So you need to reduce your data. So you do dimension reduction, a factor analysis. And so I'm going to look at my, um, my variables here. And again, a lot of different things here. We want our univariates, our correlations. Um, this is the test of sphericity. And then there's different types. You can do what's called a principal component analysis, or you can do another one would be what's called a maximum likelihood. <clears throat> so different two different forms of a factor analysis. And click OK. And again, um, Pretty detailed stuff here, but your descriptives, your correlations, your tests of sphericity, your communalities, which is it's extracting these variables and still trying to figure out how much of the variance is being explained. And as you add the variance, so component one, which was the systolic two, three, and four, and it's just showing the relative contributions of those. Uh, an eigenvalue of greater than one means that um, it is adding to the factor. So if you were putting this into a your factor analysis, you would you would only use the first two components because they're adding these eigenvalues are adding to the um, the factors. The fa the eigenvalues that are less than one, um, you would drop out of your out of your model basically. So if these were four questions, you would use the first two and drop the second two. And you can plot those, see some interesting things. And that is factor analysis.